Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Reluctant Sisters podcast. I'm Adrian. I am the Reluctant Knitter, um, and there are two other sisters that I used to podcast with. So anyway, if you've been watching for a long time, thank you for coming back. And if you're new, thanks for checking the podcast out. I was going to say checking us out, but I'm alone. So long story short, I used to podcast with my sister Sarah, and then Amy came along, and then I stopped podcasting, and then... Amy stopped podcasting. Well, it was kind of just like hard to get all together. So Sarah's actually been doing it for a little while. It's been a couple months, but she's been doing it more consistently um, and keeping up with it. And I have been missing an action. So it's been two months since I put anything up on YouTube um, with a New England Fiber Festival recap haul, whatever. And it's been over a year since I've actually like done an actual podcast. So I have some ideas on how maybe... Um, I can keep up with some of this stuff, um, best fitting within my current situation. Um, so I'm going to talk about that after. So let's kind of get started where you can find us. So we have a uh, Ravelry group, uh, the Reluctant Sisters podcast. I do put my show notes up there. Um, I think I'm also going to put them down below as well, um, just in case you don't want to go over there. Um, sorry, I felt like it was a little crooked. Um, but anyway, we have a podcast group and then, um, I'm on Ravelry as reluctant knitter with no E in the knitter. And then on Instagram, which I'm the most active on as the reluctant knitter. So check me out on all the forums and, um, we have cows and stuff, but I'm not, I'm not really good on Ravelry. I'm really not super active on Ravelry. So Head over to the podcast group. You'll see all the active cows. There's prizes in the cows. Um, I'm not even really sure. I'm like so bad. I'm not even really sure. <laughs> That's my dog, obviously. I'm not even sure like what's still going on. So, all right. So let's get started. I have FOs, I have whips, and I have really a lot of procurements, which I don't ever have a lot of procurement so um, it's gonna make me look like I buy a lot of yarn but I don't really okay FOS so I'm not sure if I showed this on my I had it in show notes this FO and then I'm not really sure if I ever put it on the re I don't even know I don't even know so I'm gonna show it again um it's a baby knit shocking you're gonna be amazed with all the baby knits that I'm gonna have to do um, so the first thing is the rolled brim baby hat. Um, I don't remember uh, the, who wrote the pattern, but it doesn't matter. I ha I'll have a link to my Ravelry page. And then I have a matching, this is for one baby. I have a matching flax light um, by Tin Can Knits. And I did this in the zero to six month size. So I think it's like bigger, like I don't think this hat, will fit this baby at the same time that the sweater will fit the baby, but that's okay. Um, so this is my first, I don't know if it was my first baby sweater, but it might be my second baby sweater, which I love. They're so fast. So I'm going to be doing that all the time. The yarn is Knitting a Love Song. Kristen um, dyes the yarn. She also has a podcast. Um, this is in the Minuet sock base, so it's the 7525 superwash and nylon um and it's in the cat colorway so she dyed this for a friend of hers in memory of a friend of hers um and we actually did a swap so <laughs> this is my dog she's a great dane her name is elizabeth bennett and you'll see her on my instagram she also has her own instagram page the real elizabeth bennett so go check it out i post every day on that but i feel like some I'm not gonna be able to talk over this thing. Some on my regular Instagram page, my friends in real life, I think get annoyed like with all of my posting of my dog. And then on my knitting Instagram page, it's mostly knitting. It's also a lot of her, but mostly knitting. Um, so then I just made, because I had some people who I didn't even know trying to follow my personal Instagram page. Um, and that's not really what I wanna do with my personal account so I just made one so whoever wants to see it can anyway, that's on a tangent regardless I loved this so we we traded um, it was a while ago I had some 
thing. Oh, it was a yarn club. I was in the um, junk yarn yarn club, the Pretty Guardians. And she wanted, I think she wanted some indie dye. I don't remember exactly what it was, indie dye, or maybe she specifically asked for junk yarn and I said I had some, so we traded. But anyway, that made a short story long. So that's that. So the baby is due in March and the um, baby shower, I can't think, the baby shower is next month. So this month, because it's now February. Welcome to February, it's February 1st. All right, those are my only FOs. Um, whips. So my first work in progress is the, I think it's Rest Feber socks, Rest Fever socks, I'm not really sure. It's by the Knitting Expat, Mina, from the Knitting Expat podcast. Um, she has a sock club, two sock clubs. One is the Cozy, oh yeah, Cozy Sock Club, and one's the Wanderlust sock club so I'm a part of both of them because I'm like obsessed with her patterns and they come out every other month so this was the first one from the Wanderlust sock, sock club and then this month so that was last month this month will be a cozy then it'll be Wanderlust and cozy so this is it so it's really easy to memorize um super simple I'm knitting these on 2.25, my Chow Goo needles, um, 40, in, 40, 40 inch, 100 centimeter circulars. Um, they're fixed circulars. And I really love them. The, the, the joint is very smooth and the needles are very slippery. So I really like my, I knit a lot of my socks on these Chow Goos. Um, this is in, it's been so long since I podcast, I don't even know how to do this anymore. Knit Picks, Stroll. I have a friend here and I'm like, really? <laughs> I had to say it because I'm like really like embarrassed. So whatever. Once I get into it, I'll calm down. Seven minutes and I think I'm, I'll be calm soon. So anyway, uh, Knit Picks, the Stroll Tweed in the Flagstone Heather. Um, I like Knit Picks. This is a gift knit. So I really like Knit Picks for that because it's affordable. Um, so you can kind of do a lot of gift knitting with them. And I'm using my little, I don't even need it anymore, but my little stitch marker. It's a little um, Great Dane. I got it at the New England Fiber Festival. I love it. So that's that. I don't think I need to say anything else about that. So I'm entering these into a Cal. Um, Mina is doing a knit along for both of her clubs, which is nice because they each last, each pattern is like two month long Cal. So um, you have plenty of time to knit them. And um, if you're a part of both clubs, then I don't know. I don't know how fast. I don't knit terribly fast, so I probably won't be able to like enter all of them, but it gives me more opportunities, so I'm excited about that. Next, I have the Millington cardigan. This is by Barocco, um, a pattern by Barocco. So um, one of my local yarn shops, it's not terribly local. It's about 20 minutes away, which I guess is is pretty local. Some pe I'm from Connecticut, so everything is a little bit close together. So some people, it's a lot longer to their local yarn shop, but I have one even closer than that. So um, Twist Yarn Shop in Niantic, Connecticut. It's so cute. Um, everyone is so, so nice there. So anyway, I went there, I think it was Small Business Saturday, and they had a little raffle. So I put my name in and I won. I couldn't believe it. I never win anything. So I won this Barocco portfolio number four and I won a sweater's worth of yarn, which was awesome. So um, I'm knitting the Millington cardigan out of this. Let me find the picture for you. So I'm really excited. I love cables. It's not for me. It's for a friend. Literally all of my knitting right now is gift knitting. It's a little bit depressing, but I'm still excited about it. So I'm knitting it in the Barocco Ultra Wool. It's super wash, 100% super wash, and it's in the Kohlrabi colorway. Um, so I finished the back, which I'm so excited about. It's super fun. It's double seed stitch and then um, cables. So it's really fun. 
And then I'm knitting on the left front, I think. I literally just started it, so I don't have a lot to go. But it's cool. So I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to do it for my friend. She's going to Norway in June. So it's still gonna be, it's gonna be like 60 degrees, she said, so, and she has no idea I'm doing it. So I'm really excited, super surprised. I've only ever knit, no, that's not true. So I've knit two sweaters, two adult sweaters for myself in my life. So it's a little bit daunting to knit a sweater for someone else, but um, I'm really excited to do it. And she's so totally knit worthy. So I'm really excited. Um, so those are all of my whips. I didn't talk about what I'm wearing. I'm actually wearing um, a shawl by Nina of The Knitting Expat. It was my first ever brioche. It's called Le Moyeux or the squishy shawl. So it's just a triangular shaped shawl. Um, I don't remember what the purple one is, which is really terrible, but the um, green is <sighs> Volen Vine Yarns. I don't remember the colorway. I'm like really awful, but I think it's on my project page, so whatever. That's what I'm wearing. Um, next we're moving on to procurements, so get ready because this is like by far the longest part of the episode. Um, okay, so first, I don't even know what order I bought these in, so let's just go through. I have, uh, Lolo Did It. I love Lolo Did It. So this is the everyday sock, so it's, I think 75.25. <laughs> 75.25. There you go. That's right, yeah. And it's in the fly. Stop. Come on. It's in the fly equals fly colorway. So all of my procurements, almost all of my procurements are going to be all skeined up because I have plans for them. Um, so this is for the Eagles football team, Philadelphia Eagles, who are in the Super Bowl. So I'm going to actually cast this on, on Super Bowl Sunday. So I'm really excited about that. Um, this is going to be a scarf. It's a baby knit, but I'm like obsessed with this baby. Not even born yet, obviously. It's born in June. I'm obsessed with this baby and I want to knit all the things for this baby. So this is going to be a pair of baby socks and a hat and then a matching scarf for dad because he's a huge Eagles fan. So I'm very excited about this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I actually don't know which patterns I'm going to do for any of them. So if you feel like responding to this video or putting any kind of suggestions anywhere, greatly appreciate it. I have no idea what socks. I've never knit baby socks before, so I have no idea what pattern to use. And I'm not, sorry, I'm not really good about like just making stuff up. I'm, I am a fairly new knitter probably two years now and so I'm not really good at like just winging stuff so I don't know what hat pattern I'm gonna do I don't know what socks I'm gonna do and I have no idea what scarf I'm gonna do and they all have to be fingering weight because that's what I bought so um, help assist out please um, next I am part of a yarn club the sheepy time knits um, yarn club my husband bought it for me for our anniversary last year. Um, it was such an amazing gift. So the August colorway was this. Hold on, I lost my tag. Oh, I lost all of this yarn down here. That's nice. I'm gonna blame it on Lizzie. So this is the sheepy time. Now I don't even know where I put my tag. What a heck. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is the sheepy feet. So every month there's, I don't know if it's every month or every other month. I haven't even paid attention. Um, there's two colors you can choose from and then you can choose your base. So it depends on, I don't, I don't know what it depends on, but some bases are available, some bases aren't. So I picked this, the Sheepy Feet, it's 75.25 in the orchid colorway. This actually says June. I guess it was the June one, right? Um, so this is all skeined up. This is for another baby. Lizzie. 
This is for another baby, a very good friend of mine. Also due in June, everyone's due in June. And so this is gonna be a dress. I took some, um, copied some of the pictures down so I could show you guys. So this is gonna be the little sister's dress. She won't be a little sister, she'll be a first baby. But anyway, I thought it was so cute. It looks like a fairly easy pattern. Um, so yeah, so that'll be good, baby girl. I guess I should show you the rest of my, for that, for this baby. Cause this isn't the only thing I'm knitting for this baby. So I also got knit picks in the Andean and Treasure, which is the, um, it's sport weight, 100% baby alpaca. So it's very soft. Lizzie, she's obsessed with this. This is another procurement and Nitty Naughty, small Nitty Naughty. I'll talk about it now because she's, look, she's really obsessed with, it. she's obsessed every time it's out. Lizzie, this is not a chew toy for you. She loves it. So if I don't talk about it, then it's just going to be clanging around. I don't know what to do with it. I'll hide it. That's another thing I bought. I've been wanting and I was like, I should just make one myself out of PVC. And then I'm like, I'm never going to do that. So I just bought it. Back to the, this. So sport weight, 100% baby alpaca. So it's really, really soft. I'm very excited about the this. This is the Aurora Heather. And this is the Finley Heather, so it's like a grayish, kind of oatmeal-ish. So I have two balls of this and one ball of this. So this is going to be the Anders sweater um, by Soren Kerr. So let me show you that. So I'm very excited about that. And then I actually bought, I don't remember, I think it's in a different weight, but... Um, I bought the same colors for mom and I'm gonna make, that was fun, I'm gonna make a matching cowl. I don't know what my problem is. And this is the Ivor by the same designer, Soren Kerr. So I'm gonna make matching cowl. Lizzie, this is, Lizzie, this is not for you, stop. So I'm excited about that. All right, back to another baby. This is the Nitpicks Hawthorne Fingering in Andromeda Speckle. This is 80% wool, 20% nylon. This is for another baby, baby number three, also due in June. So that's one, two, three babies due in June. And this is going to be the Uh, newborn vertebrae. Did I write that down? I don't know if I wrote that down. But you guys probably are familiar with it. I've never knit one before, but I'm excited. To <laughs> so that's this one. Baby girl. Baby girl number two. Baby total number three. Then I got this. This is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Make Believe Hand Painted. So, um, and then this is, oh, the newborn vertebrae is by Kelly Van Niekirk. Um, this is 7525 wool nylon. Um, this is the Make Believe colorway. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but my dog just passed wind. That's the nicest way to say it. So this is for baby number four, baby girl number three, and this is going to be a sock bunny, sock yarn bunny by Susan B. Anderson. Um, I made, she has twins, twin girls, and I made twin sock bunnies for her. So when I asked her what she wanted, she said, well, you have to make her a bunny. And I was like, yeah, I've already made like a hundred of them, but that's my own fault for asking. So that's what she gets. What she wants, she gets. So I'm excited about that. Last on my procurements is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering. I went on Knit Picks. I'm telling you, Knit Picks is so affordable. It's so good for gift knitting. I love it. Um, this is hand painted again, sunny afternoon. So I bought this. I thought it was going to be. Um, 
I thought it was gonna be, what am I trying to say, like a unisex color, which I guess technically it is, but when I got it, I didn't love it for either a boy or a girl, so I'm just like, whatever. Um, I do have some stuff in my stash, so I'll just use that instead. And so I'm gonna make a pair of socks out of um, this for a friend, which she already approved the color, so I'm excited about. So that's what that is. Was supposed to be a baby knit, but is not anymore. That's all my procurement. So this is gonna be a pretty short podcast. Usually it's like really long. But anyway, I don't have a lot to talk about. I guess I just have a lot of stuff that I bought. Um, so anyway, it's hard for me to sit down and podcast. Um, <laughs> my dog is tearing, literally. Hey, no, ah, no, no, do not do that. Um, it's hard for me to sit down and podcast. Then I have to edit it. And I know a lot of people are like, you don't have to edit it, but I like watching, not that I care watching non-edited podcasts, but I prefer edited podcasts. I don't mean that to sound, I don't mean that to sound judgmental. If you don't, if I watch you and you don't have an edited podcast, but anyway, I prefer to edit. I don't really have the time to edit though. So she literally, look, Lizzie, look what she did. Bad dog. <laughs> she is a bad dog though but anyway you cannot have this not for you so anyway <laughs> she said she wasn't gonna laugh at me but she's laughing at me um so I don't really know what I want to do because I really like knitting obviously so just because I'm not podcasting doesn't mean I have to stop knitting but I like doing this it's like a fun good creative outlet for me so I want to keep podcasting but then I'm like but I just I feel guilty when I don't and I miss it when I don't but then I never have the time to do it so I watch Mina from the knitting expat podcast Lizzie really honestly enough enough um and she does one week she'll do a regular podcast and the next week she'll do a vlog. So then I'm like, well, maybe I'll do a vlog because that's really cool because then it's just like a little bit every day and then I just put it all together. So the upside is that I don't have to sit down one big chunk of time to record a podcast. The downside is I'm still editing. Um, so I thought maybe I should do that. And then the other thing I'm thinking is do I have enough content? Sorry, I feel like this is like was knocked by her. Do I have enough content to film every single day? I don't really know, probably, I'm not really sure. Also, most of my knitting is done when my husband is home and I'm having a hard enough time like with my friend, like podcasting in front of her. Like, am I gonna feel super weird vlogging in front of my husband? Probably not. These are just all things that I'm thinking about like a crazy person. So then I was thinking, I also watch Barbara from the Knitting I Love podcast, and she does full podcasts, but then she also does like little videos, like F, she'll do like an FO video, and it's like five minutes, and she'll do a whip video, and it's like five minutes. So that's another thing I was thinking, maybe I should just do something like that. Um, I guess there's no really downside to doing it that way. I can't really remember what we had thought. I was, I've been obsessively thinking about this for days and I've been talking to my friend about what I should do. So I can't really remember what the downside was to that. Um, I think editing maybe, I don't really remember. Yeah, I just, yeah, I don't remember either. She doesn't remember <laughs> either. I don't, I'm really like obsessively like, okay, that's better. So anyway, um, so I thought maybe I should do that. And then I was like, well, maybe, I should just utilize Instagram live. So if I do Instagram live, then there's no editing. Um, <clears throat> and then you can save your live video and it'll show for 40, 24 hours. So I thought that that would best fit like, quote unquote, like in my lifestyle. <clears throat> Not like, I don't even know why I say it like that. Like I have some weird lifestyle, alternative lifestyle. I don't, I'm a normal human being. So <laughs> I thought that might best fit, but then I was thinking the downside, I guess, to that is that it's only available for 24 hours. So if some people want to see it, then, and they don't get a chance, whereas if it's up on YouTube, then whoever can watch it whenever they have time. So I guess I haven't really, I think yesterday I was like, for sure I'm going to um, do Instagram live. That's definitely what I'm going to be doing. Now I'm like not so sure because I'm looking at this podcast and it's only 25 minutes. So how long is it really going to take me to upload? And 
I think that the reason why my other ones took so long was because there there were hauls. And then when I was back podcasting with my sisters, you had three people talking about stuff. So of course it's going to be over an hour. So I guess I haven't really decided. I guess what I'm getting at is those are the three things I'm thinking about doing. Um, what do you guys think? Would you like, would you rather watch Instagram live videos? Would you rather me do like a podcast and upload it? You can watch it at your convenience. Would you rather me do like FO and, um, <sighs> FO and whip short videos, like five minutes. Would you rather see a vlog? Would you rather, I guess that's kind of what I'm getting at is I'm non-committal and indecisive and I need people to help me. So help me. That's my rant. That's what I've been thinking. I've been thinking a lot more stuff, but it's best left not to this kind of forum. Um, and I guess that's it. So I guess it didn't take very long. Um, I guess I don't know what I was complaining about in the first place. And I'll probably just keep doing podcasts. Long story short. I guess that's it. So thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I will hopefully see you guys again soon. Bye. So guys, I'm um, just kidding. I'm not done. So I did want to talk about what I was watching because I am watching. I'm starting to, long story short, we got rid of cable. <laughs> so I'm watching more podcasts, um, which I wasn't watching for a little while. And I think it's probably because I felt like sad because I wasn't podcasting and I was laying so much. So anyway, I'm watching some new podcasts now. So the first one I'm watching is, sorry, my dog. Um... Espas Clico podcast. It is Melissa and Lisa who are the owners of a yarn store in Montreal, Canada of the same name, Espas Clico. So I just watched the most recent episode. Um, I really like it because it's in their yarn store. So it's pretty cool. Like the background of yarn. They also write patterns and they also have, um, she's just going to have to deal with it. It's under the chair. Um, <laughs> You have to find something else. Um, they write patterns and they also have some people in their shop who do sample knits out of the yarn. So that's really cool. You can see the sample of the pattern and you can also see what the yarn looks like knit up. So that's really neat. So um, I like them. And then in their podcast, they talked about someone, I think she works there, but I'm not really positive. But anyway, her name is Diana Walla. She has a new podcast called, I don't even know if it's considered a podcast, but it's called Paper Tiger. Um, her first episode was her just introducing herself. The second one was all about Norwegian yarns because she just spent, I don't remember how long, but just lived in Norway. And now she's back in Canada or is now in Canada. I don't know where she's from originally. I'm just like talking like, like I know everything and I don't. Um, so she's in Canada now and she also has a blog, Paper Tiger blog, which is I think more, way more established than obviously this, this podcast. So three episodes on the podcast. She also is a hand knitwear designer. So on her Norwegian, um, episode about Norwegian yarn, she was talking about, I think it was on that one. doesn't matter mm -hmm. that she had designed a pattern for, now I don't remember what it was. But it was super recognizable. Maybe it was Quince and Co. Quince and Co. Um, so that's really cool. And she's super into color work, which is awesome. And she had Lizzie. Really? I will get it in a second. So she had um, this episode on Norwegian yarn, and it was so informative. Um, and it wasn't even like as in depth, I think as she could have, but it was like all about the different breeds of sheep and all about what the wool is like. And she had a bunch of skeins of yarn to show. She had a bunch of things knit out of it. So I think that if you're like an information junkie, if you really like a lot of info, um, and you like learning about new things, I think it'll be a really cool podcast to watch. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure to, to put that in here. So now for realsies, I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs>